Outriders is a one-noted game. It's all about the endgame loop of mod this thing and do this thing faster and more efficiently. Outriders is so focused on this one model that the rest of the game falls short as a result. The story is laughably bad, the bugs for now are very noticeable, the enemy variety is lackluster, the environment is stale and grey, the characters are forgettable, it hits every cliche and tries to be as edgy as possible. But I also can't help but love it. Trust me, I tried to write this video a bunch of different times, and each time I've been conflicted on how I felt about the game. When I've been streaming Outriders, people constantly ask me what I think, and I have a new answer every single time. It's bad. It's good. It's buggy. It's rewarding. It's better solo. It's better with friends. The crashes. The experiences. Always a new answer. Recently, I went on a binge of Joseph Anderson reviews. One that the title of this video makes a nod to, and in his video about Little Nightmares, he brings up that the game is more about an experience than the game itself. That the goal of Little Nightmares is to give you a memorable experience, and that it will be different for each player. I feel that Outriders fits this point so perfectly, that I can only recommend the demo of the game before playing. Outriders gave me a great experience, but it will also come down to circumstances. I am someone who this game is definitely catering to. I play looter shooters a lot, and every itch I have been missing in others, this game scratched. But that also means it created its own new itches. The amount of comments comparing this game to others were overwhelming in my time so far streaming the game. Hey Evan, is this game worth $60? Hey Evan, isn't Outriders just isn't Destiny? Isn't Outriders just Microsoft Flight Simulator XP version? I hate to break this to anyone who may or may not want to hear this, but Outriders is Outriders. It pulls ideas from other games, but this one is its own experience. A bad game, but for me, a good experience. I should hate this game to the core, but for some reason I can't put it down. It was my experience that defined Outriders for me. I played with friends the whole way through, so most of the bugs and hilariously bad writing were forgivable, knowing that my friends were laughing with me. When I kill a man, he knows it was me. No. What? We met that guy and killed that Take guy in two missions. The server's going down all the time and constant crashes of the game on opening weekend is to be expected in live service games in 2021 with how ambitious games have become. And once again, it's objectively bad on the game for having server and crashing issues, no matter what the excuse or understanding reasons may be. But my experience with these crashes and server issues was spending time doing other things while talking to my friends. Once again, bad and in some ways inexcusable, but I personally was not affected by these. You see, for someone, this is a horrible experience. They may only have a few hours a week to play, so this server inconvenience leaves a tremendous impression on their view. But for me, this was excusable. The experience argument is on every avenue of the game. I mean, to someone who is looking for a story, Outriders does have one, and one that is so cliche that I think the writers intentionally made it over the top bad to get a laugh out of the players. I can't even count how many times a character turns around in a cutscene to get shot in the back of the head. Hell, I can't even remember a character's name. I can't count how many times a cutscene just randomly ends in the middle of a climactic moment. I'm trying to save them! And it just ends! Why? No! How many times there's a cutscene where a character does nothing at all except jump or move their hands? How many times a character curses just to curse? It got to the point that I thought the devs just had some fun writing a game in the mind of a 10 year old watching Full Metal Jacket and Mad Max from the perspective of Tommy Wiseau over and over again. This would absolutely ruin my experience if I wanted the game to be deeply rooted in story. But the type of player I am and the experience I look for doesn't depend on the campaign with looter shooters. On the other hand, if the game loop and core gameplay wasn't entertaining to my experience, then I would have just left the game before it ever began. I think to most people that try Outriders, this game will be a generic third person looter shooter with boring art, 
bad sound balancing, noticeable bugs, and not enough new to the table. But I would go out on a limb and say that People Can Fly made this one noted on purpose because while those are the biggest critiques I can give Outriders and the reasons I can't call this a good game, the biggest compliment I can give Outriders is the core gameplay and end game loop. And although it suffers from the number game of upgrades just offering number bumps instead of new abilities, it does this intentionally to maximize efficiency on boss kills and runs of loot, which is the game. For my experience, it's satisfying seeing a once bullet sponge turn into a piece of paper when I outsmart a section and think about my build. This experience is different for a solo player. This experience is different for a player that doesn't tinker with mods. If I'm moving fast with friends, pairing our abilities in tandem to mow through areas, that is the core loop and that is what I enjoy, and that's when I think Outriders is at its best. But someone who doesn't do this, and has a difficult time in harder rooms by not messing with their build, is going to be frustrated and is going to make a reddit post with at least 5 gold badges and one badge that I can't even make out what it is, on why the game sucks. As the game scales its difficulty, it scales its need for the player to play the way the game wants you to, and that may not appeal to a player looking to just shoot at harder levels. The campaign is around 20 hours long, give or take, and will have you ending around level 28 with the final level being 30, then gear level going up to 50. The expeditions or endgame content can be endless time sinks though, with 45 legendary weapons and 96 legendary armor pieces. This collectathon is where the game clearly wants the player to be, but if you don't like just this avenue, I can't recommend Outriders to you. That's why I think the demo does what demos do. Give you a good taste of if you will like the experience. However, the demo also does bad because it doesn't give you a taste of the crafting side. The side that is the most important in Outriders to reap the benefits. Outriders works by having the mods listed as cards. So every weapon and armor piece can drop a random mod but only purples can drop tier 2 mods and only legendaries can drop tier 3 mods. These mods can be applied to anything once the item has been scrapped, so getting a legendary is more cool for the mod than the weapons or armor piece itself. You can only mod one slot of blue and purple items, but legendaries have both slots available to mod. Once again, if collecting the rarest gear and weapons is your goal, then this game is for you. Outriders offers something that only Destiny had at launch, a clear end goal in sight of a live service game. Destiny's end game was the raid, and Outriders has that too with its Eye of the Storm expedition. While we're on the topic of expeditions, I have to say that they weren't as cool as I was hoping for and are just as weird as the main game. Some of them have generic bosses that you fought before with random cutscenes added, while some have full boss fights against named enemies. Some expeditions have phases, some of them are three rooms, some of them are multiple, some of them have random cutscenes of the boss just dying, lending to that cutscene comedy argument from earlier. For some, this will be an awful time if you expected new mechanics or a completely different experience, but if you like the rest of the game, you will have fun here too. The point I'm trying to make is that this stuff, again, is bad to some players, and I really shouldn't like it, but from my experience, I enjoyed it nonetheless. I think Outriders is just simply put, a flawed game that you should play. Not to be coy, a bad game that you should play for the experience it has to offer to you. I've enjoyed this game a lot, but I can't call it a good game either. A review that is so honest, it basically contradicts itself. Thank you for watching this video. One that I know some won't like, but others may give a chance. So if you're one of those people, thank you, and if you enjoy, a like and a sub are greatly appreciated, as well as watching my stream where I'll continue to play this game even with its bad parts. If you guys want more Outriders videos, more in-depth talk about the game, let me know and I can do a bigger review on the game as well. Thanks again, and on to the next video. Mmm. No! Oh, shit. No! <laughs>
No! No! Come on, don't forget to see the final cuts. I got stuck in the Kamehameha again! I'm fucking sliding around the floor like a goddamn Roomba. They don't even look at me. They don't even look at me. I'm trying to die. Cursed us. But I won. What? He turned around and died. You can't make this up. Right, so we've led right into the world. All right, so we, we, we understand how our superpowers work. Oh, oh no. shit. Oh my god, Fred, you're still dancing. <laughs> oh no, you're gonna explode. No. I will protect. Oh god, it works. Someone hit the lights. Exactly as I saw it.